All right, we're going to take a look at perfect competition in review. We're going to take a look at uh, profits or losses in the short run in perfect competition, and then how long run equilibrium um, is restored. So here's our graph of a firm in perfect competition. You see the industry on the left, the firm on the right. In this case, the firm is making losses um, because at the uh, profit maximizing, or in this case, loss minimizing quantity of eight, which is set by looking where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, um, the revenue per unit is below the cost per unit. So that gold area is a total area of losses for the firm. Because where that quantity runs into ATC, that is the cost per unit. So there's our losses. Um, again, here we can see a graph of just a firm now making a profit. Um, you can go ahead and answer these questions. And now let's take a look at the long run, right? So here's our example of wheat and corn. In the long run, perfect competition means that firms can enter and leave at will. There's low barriers to entry or no barriers to entry, free entry and exit in a perfectly competitive market. So firms will enter if there's a profit, firms will leave if there's a loss. Um, what happens in the long run then is that all firms break even. They make zero economic profit, which is also called normal profit. Um, and we'll also talk about why perfect competition in the long run is super, super um, efficient. Why Adam Smith was super excited for it. Um, okay, anyways, so here's our long run equilibrium graph. You can see that this firm is not making a profit or a loss because at the profit maximizing quantity of eight, the firm is making $15 a unit and is also, each unit is costing the firm $15. Um, economic costs equal to $15. So this firm is breaking even. Um, here's another graph of that same firm, kind of a little bit bigger. Um, our point right there is an important point because it's where all three of these things come together. Marginal cost, minimum ATC, and marginal revenue. Up here it says price, price and marginal revenue being the same thing for a price-taking firm or a perfectly competitive firm. So again, that's normal profit. At this point, there's no incentive to enter or leave. The people who own and work for these businesses are leading a normal life, an easy way to think about normal profit. They're not in the poorhouse, but they're not raking the cash in hand over fist. Um, so there's no one's looking over their fence at these corn farmers saying, wow, they've got it so good, I'm going to change out to planting corn instead of wheat. And vice versa, they're not, they're not uh, losing their jobs and needing to find jobs in a different industry or something like that. Right? So our total costs and our total revenue are the same. Um, this is a scenario where the firm, well, I'll let you answer the questions. So pause it and answer those questions. You should have come to the firm being in the short run um, because you can see that there's profits here and profits uh, will go away in the long run. So, And we'll show you uh, graphically just what that means. Um, in the long run, firms are going to enter this industry. That means in the long run, price is going to go down. Quantity is going to rise for the industry. Um, for the firm, price also goes down because the firm's price is set by the industry. And the firm's quantity will fall, um, as we'll see in the graph here. So when firms enter, because of those profits, prices fall. Price will fall to a point where the long run perfectly competitive equilibrium point is achieved. So the firm's quantity falls slightly, the industry quantity uh, increases, and the price for both firm and industry, which is one price, um, decreases. So in the long run, we see zero economic profit. So the $10 price is right where things should be. Again, this is a similar scenario. Go ahead and answer those questions. What we see here is the opposite. This is now firms making a loss. So that gold area was loss. When there's losses, firms will leave the industry, resulting in higher prices. Higher price for the industry means a higher price for the firm. And those firms that are able to stick it out in that industry will um, see their losses go away and return to a scenario of normal economic profit or long-run equilibrium.
Now, the most complicated part of the graphing for this unit is going from long run to long run. So here we are in perfectly impetitive long run equilibrium. Um, let's just say something happens to increase demand. It's all of a sudden a new scientific study comes out that says that eating corn will add years onto your life or make you regrow hair that you've lost on top of your head. I don't know. Um, anyways, so we'd see demand shift out. And the shift out in demand is going to cause price to increase and industry quantity to increase. So the firm is making more money. The firm is going to increase their quantity slightly. And we can see that there is an area of economic profit represented by the gold box. Um, Eventually, though, price is going to return back to that long-run equilibrium because those profits are going to cause firms to want to enter the industry. As firms enter the industry, industry quantity goes up again, but price goes back down. So the marginal revenue curve for the firm uh, will eventually fall back to its original level of $15 in this example. Let's talk about efficiency really quick. Um, so in perfect competitive uh, long run equilibrium is both uh, both kinds of efficient. It's productively efficient and allocatively efficient. I'll show it to you on the graph here. Uh, you remember productive efficiency anywhere on that PPC. Um, what we want to do is produce the good in the least costly way. It's where price equals minimum ATC. At this point you can see that this is the firm will produce here, right? But that is not the minimum ATC. The minimum ATC is here, right? The arrow is pointing to where the firm is producing, which is a slightly higher cost than if the firm is producing at minimum ATC. It's not the firm's number one directive to produce at minimum ATC. Same if the firm's making a loss. Finally, the, uh, the firm in long run perfect competition is also allocatively efficient. Um, the easiest way to think about allocative efficiency as I click through all these slides is that allocatively efficient is where market supply meets market demand. Um, more on this later. Thanks.